Hello friends, welcome to the Melbang. I'm Piyush Jain and today I'm bringing to you a corporate conversation around a company which is uh, very soon going to be listed. We're talking about an IPO of Concord Biotech, a company which has made its mark in the biotech space, especially in the fermentation space. And it has been a long journey for them before actually they decided to get listed. Uh, the journey has been more than 20 years old and to know more about the company. Now, let me welcome the management, Mr. Ankur Veth, Joint MD and CEO, and Mr. Lalit Sethi, Chief Financial Officer of the company. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Thank you. for our, Thank you for having us. Uh, Mr. Ankur, let's first start with you and help us understand how has been the journey from uh, a niche uh, company, a small company focused on a particular sector to now actually becoming a company which is marking its presence uh, in, a, in a very strong way in many, many countries. Uh, how has been the journey? How has been the growth? Yes, so I think the journey has been uh, a phenomenal run for us over the last uh, 23 years. You know, when we started back in 2000, uh, we started that we are only going to be manufacturing fermentation and semi-synthetic um, APIs uh, and not the chemical synthesis where much of the industry is. So uh, we started with creating a unique position for us uh, and a unique segment. And I think uh, that's worked for us because uh, our chairman and managing director, Mr. Sudhir Vaid, has had a 40 years of experience in this area of fermentation. And that's something that we, we built on. And in these 23 years of our journey, uh, we have become market leaders in many of our APIs, whether they are in the area of immunosuppressant APIs, oncology, anti-infectives, antifungal. And, uh, you know, from, from one small block uh, at our first unit, we have now uh, more than three manufacturing facilities uh, and are having few plans to kind of build on the fourth one as well. Uh, and a very strong global presence. So, so uh, you know, uh, very excited now uh, that uh, this is another journey that we are starting in terms of entering into the public market. So, looking forward to that as well. Sure. Uh, in terms of fermentation, um, uh, pardon me for my very simple question, but uh, keeping uh, in mind the interest of our viewers, help us understand uh, basically what this vertical implies because uh, we have been uh, exposed, our viewers would be exposed uh, to both formulation side, the API side. Uh, when we say fermentation uh, part of the business, uh, which part of the end customer it is serving to, uh, which part of perhaps uh, the end sort of, uh, uh, I would say, um, medicines, perhaps it is actually getting, uh, it is contributing. Uh, help us understand that part of the business model. Sure, so I think, uh, you know, the with the help of the biotechnology route and the fermentation process we make generic apis uh, which are then used in the finished formulation uh, to cater to the needs of the patients now the therapies could be different as i mentioned the, the therapies could be in the area of transplants uh, oncology anti-infectives and antifungal but the differentiation lies in terms of how do you make uh, these generic apis as I mentioned that the generic APIs can either be made through the chemical synthesis route uh, right. or through the area of fermentation. Now in fermentation, it is a very complex and a challenging process because here you are working with living microorganisms and then you have to ensure that you are always able to make the desired product with the desired productivity. So to give you an example, like in chemistry, you know, uh, A plus B will always give you a C. It's a fixed thing that you will do through the uh, through the chemistry rule. But in fermentation, an A plus B can give you multiple products like a B1, C1, C2, C3 if you do not control the, the process parameters uh, because living microorganisms you, have, you are working with. So there is a lot of technical expertise that is required to kind of get into this segment, which I would say globally there are very few players who are working with such kind of expertise and at that to such kind of scale. I have a follow-up question here. The question is, uh, you would be having competitors in the uh, who actually would be making the similar type of, uh, um, I would say, products uh, based on the chemical synthesis. Would that be a right statement? No. So the products which are made through fermentation, 
cannot be made through chemical synthesis and vice versa right so th this is where actually the moat lies so when we talk about such products uh, uh, which type of products uh, these would be and what kind of uh, uh, sort of uh, markets actually uh, we are targeting from the perspective of the company so we are catering to worldwide markets we are present in all the regulated markets emerging markets india market our key markets are like that of india japan us latam uh, and we have more than presence in more than 70 plus countries and are having customers more than 200 plus customers across different geographies um, in terms of the product portfolio we have uh, products in the immunosuppressants uh, which are basically APIs used uh, for transplant. So when patient gets goes undergoes a transplant, like a kidney transplant or a liver transplant, uh, you know these kind of drugs are used. And I would say that Concord is amongst the few companies globally, um, or I would say the only company globally who has the entire range of these immunosuppressant APIs, which are through the route of fermentation. Um, apart from that. We have products uh, in the oncology segment, um, anti-infectives and antifungal, close to around 23 APIs that we are making in this space, which is uh, quite an achievement if you put it in the context of the fermentation players globally. Right. Uh, and now let me come across to Laliji. Um, Laliji, now the next question is, uh, with this sort of development, you would be having a set of clients who would be continuously building volumes with you as they would be building volumes again in their own markets. So you'd be continuously supplying to them. Then it's, it is also a function of capacities also. Your exportability, your uh, sort of capacity, capability, your capability to sort of penetrate more and more markets. So help us understand uh, your uh, investments into capacities. What is the utilization right now? Um, and any PLI schemes which actually are giving you any sort of advantage? Yes. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, if you ask me the capacities, we have sufficient capacities for uh, manufacturing of both API and the formulation side. Uh, in API, for example, in 2021, we, uh, you know, uh, in, we, uh, we commercialized uh, the unit three for manufacturing of API with the capacity of uh, 800 meter cube of the uh, fermentation API. So now in total, we have around 450 in the unit one and 800 in the unit three which totally makes to 1,250 meter cube of the capacities as far as the API is concerned. Uh, regarding the formulation side, we are present in the tablets, capsules and uh, suspension. And now we are also coming up with uh, the injectable facility, which is likely to be completed by the end of this calendar year. Now, uh, coming to your points of uh, our, uh, you know, uh, our uh, scheme, uh, our uh, our eligibility for the PLI scheme, yes, we are working with the government of India and uh, we are applying PLI scheme number B and uh, wherein uh, we are entitled as per the scheme papers and we are also made an applications for uh, the PLI benefits. Right, sir. And uh, depending on location, because many of the pharma companies, they have taken advantage in the past of uh, either Northeast or the hilly regions of the North, uh, any sort of tax advantage which you are enjoying right now and if yes, Till uh, what year basically uh, you are enjoying that? Uh, question is for you, Laliji. Uh, in fact, uh, we don't have any unit which is there in the tax uh, heavens uh, kind of a thing. All the three units are located in Gujarat, uh, uh, which is approximately 100, uh, uh, one hour or 45 minutes away from Ahmedabad city. So one facility is there in Dolka, another is in Valthera, and the third unit is in Limbasi. So all these three are uh, in the Gujarat region. But just to add there, uh, you know, the government of Gujarat has been very, very active in this area of biotechnology. And I would say that they have a very progressive biotech policy, which uh, we are working very closely with the government of Gujarat in terms of how we can further increase the biotechnology sector uh, in, the, uh, in the area of uh, Gujarat and in Ahmedabad. And uh, to add to what Lalit said about the PLI, I think uh, this is one sector where, again, we are actively working with the government of India in terms of making India Atmanirbhar uh, in the area of fermentation APIs. Um, you know, just to uh, talk about that during COVID times, uh, we launched the product called Amphotericin B uh, as an API, which was used for black fungus. Yes. Uh, 
and that, uh, that, that uh, was in huge demand i remember that i know yes and uh, we you know this is again a fermentation api and uh, you know we 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 went ahead we took that challenge and we launched the product so that we could cater to the needs of the patients in india and global markets so uh, those are the kind of uh, uh, areas that we are focusing on and trying to make india more atmanirbhar in the area of fermentation api Sure, um, Lariji. One one question uh, for you. Uh, I don't know if if you have the numbers ready, but in terms of capacity utilization, uh, any new capacity, like all the capacities which you have uh, sort of uh, done so far, what is the average um, asset turnover we we are able to make on the capacities? It basically differs from unit to unit. Uh, uh, frankly speaking, in unit one, uh, we are we are operating at the peak utilization of the capacity which is about 70 75% in unit 2 we have uh, made the expansion very uh, recently so there uh, our capacity utilization is approximately uh, 10 uh, 10 10% and in the unit 3 we are operating at 30% of uh, the capacity utilization so if you ask for the asset turn when uh, you can uh, you can easily you know in case you uh, you can easily assume the asset turn of around 2.5 to 3 uh, in uh, these kind of businesses so just to add to that that kind of shows the kind of growth levers that we actually have going forward uh, in terms of the capacities that we have built on oh absolutely it also shows that uh, you don't need any any capex in the near future because uh, uh, there's a lot of room actually for the sales to grow without uh, incurring any new fresh greenfield capex um this this ipo is also about offer for sale the company is not looking towards raising any uh, fresh funds for itself uh, uh, was it primarily because of uh, already the internal accruals have funded the capacity generation and you you're not looking to sort of uh, build any new capacity uh, um, how how is the situation right now no there is no primary which has been planned in uh, uh, this ipo is complete uh, ofs to you know give an opportunity to the private equity who has been there with the company since 2016 and exit route to uh, have some kind of a liquidity in the stock uh, as far as the uh, funds funds requirement for the capacity is required no it is all funded through the internal accruals right uh, fair enough uh, and apart from that uh, sir uh, one question uh, perhaps uh, which uh, our viewers actually would be looking uh, uh with lot of interest uh, from industry perspective from a uh, overall sector perspective how the overall operating environment looking to you so, sorry uh, how's the overall uh ankur ji this, this question is for you how's the overall industry operating environment looking to you i'm asking from an industry point of view sure so i think uh, you know if you see the market uh, uh, is growing at a cagr of close to around 10 to 11% um and in addition to that there are opportunities for api players like ourselves in terms of when you see more customer acquisitions happening um so uh, you know for for an api player growth comes from two ways which is the industry growing as well as uh, you know more of customer acquisitions and that's something that we have done over the years uh, that uh, because of which we are having a leadership position uh, on our apis right um laliji uh, last question to you perhaps uh, i am asking only on the reported numbers uh, what was uh, the, the last uh, the last year annual revenue as per the declared numbers in drhp it was 853 crores right 853 crores and uh, largely we are talking about uh, capacity utilization where we have lot of room to actually grow the capacity so fair to say for the next one or two years you would not be looking uh, for any uh, a uh, new capacity construction like if if you can actually uh, uh, talk about that or we can i think we have sufficient capacities whether it is uh, api vertical of our business or the formulation uh, vertical but at the same time we are also putting up an injectable plants which is uh, in valthera facilities which will also be uh, you can say commercialized or will be ready by the end of this uh, calendar year Yes, and the government, both in Gujarat and the central government, are giving a uh, lot of incentives uh, from manufacturing perspective. So perhaps that should be serving you well. But uh, we'll leave uh, that uh, for now here, and uh, we'll extend our uh, all the best wishes uh, to both of you to Concord okay. Biotech. 
for a very uh, successful uh, listing uh, journey and then eventually we'll again get in touch with you uh, later on as the sort of uh, next set of quarterly results come by but thank you for coming on the show thank, thank you, you very much pleasure talking to you and with that dear viewers it's a wrap on the show hope you enjoyed it subscribe to our youtube channel and click on the bell icon to never miss an update from nirmal bang